All right, first and foremost, I have to give a shout out to B. Rice because he asked me to. He was just visiting here moments ago, um, doing some extra help on a Saturday, snowy Saturday night. Kind of pathetic, huh? Um, no, he's not pathetic. The pathetic part is the weather. So we are going to be talking about DNA, its structure. And to understand DNA structure is very important because it reveals a lot of how it functions. So it's going to be the one molecule that we delve into relatively deeply of the big four, um, where I expect you to know the structural formula of the, uh, the molecule, uh, whereas before you just had to know general shapes and such. Um, so first and foremost, don't forget that DNA and deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA, ribonucleic acid, are made up of building blocks called nucleotides. And a nucleotide consists of three things, and I'm going to do this very schematically. All right, so what we have here is this dude right here is our sugar. And, hmm, I guess I will just call it, uh, well, I'll squeeze in there, sugar. Let me blow this up. And the accent mark actually shouldn't be there, so let me erase our little accent mark there. And in this case, it's going to be the deoxyribose sugar, if we're talking about DNA. And then we have, just above this, we have a phosphate. And then over here to the right, we have what's called a nitrogen base. Okay? So collectively, this thing is called a nucleotide. And they get assembled uh, in a very specific way to build up an entire DNA molecule. So you'd have a whole pile of these nucleotides that would connect together to make the DNA molecule. So let's go ahead and assemble that. I'm going to just draw another one below this in the exact same way. I'm going to cheat, though. I'm going to select up this whole thing here. Oops, I didn't mean to cut it. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it right below. And I'm going to change my nitrogen base's shape a little bit here. And I'm also going to change its color. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put together a series of these things and then come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, unfortunately, I couldn't fit this all into one screen, so it's a little bit hard to see. But what I've done is I've put three nucleotides together, and I've connected them with a covalent bond. And the covalent bond I'm going to point out to you is right here. So this covalent bond connected connects these two nucleic acids, or these two nitrogen bases. And then this covalent bond connects this nucleotide to this nucleotide. Now you'll also notice that I erased the generic nitrogen base inside these shapes here. And that's because I want to now label these things specifically. I'm going to call this one, it's a little guy, thiamine. And we're going to call the one below it that's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go green on this too. So I'm going to call this one adenine. Okay. And then down here you're going to see I have this orange fella. And this is a larger orange fella. I'm going to call the orange guy guanine. All right. So I have thiamine, adenine, and guanine. And in fact, those become the specific names of these nucleotides. So this would be a thiamine nucleotide, an adenine nucleotide, and a guanine nucleotide. All right, so now you'll notice that I just added the whole other half of the molecule uh, to make it into a DNA molecule. And the other thing you're going to see that I hope you picked up on immediately is that it runs in the opposite direction. So the right side looks like it's upside down relative to the left side. And as we go down, you can see that it continues to be the case. You'll also notice here that I've paired up the, the nitrogen bases in a very specific way. The T and the A always go together, and the G and the C also always go together. And that's an important thing to make sure that we write down and understand here, that A is always going to be complementary to T, and C is going to be complementary to G. That term, complementary, is one I want you to make sure that you stick into your brain. 
The other thing that I want you to pick up on here is that the shapes fit like puzzle pieces. And that is vital because there's going to be a bond, a hydrogen bond, that will exist between the T and the A. In fact, there are two specific hydrogen bonds that always exist, always exist between T and A. So I draw two dotted lines there. And between the G and the C, there actually are three specific hydrogen bonds that connect them. Now, there's another piece of information I'll chuck into here. It's, it's not super important, and frankly, I'm not even sure why I'm even telling you right now. But the, you'll, you'll see that the A and the G are both sort of, well, I'm not sure if it really looks like it, but they're slightly larger molecules, slightly larger nitrogen bases than the T and the C. And we do have names for that. So I'm going to, well... I don't have much room here. So nitrogen base A and nitrogen base G. So, oh, did I screw that up? Oh, yeah. A and G are what are called purines, and T and C are called pyrimidines. Um, now, it's important, though, it's far more important that you know that A always goes with T and C always goes with G. So the next thing I want to make sure is clear to you is that this is nice and all to look at this from a schematic standpoint, but this isn't really what the molecules look like for real. And in some ways, if you look and see, well, I shouldn't even say for real because the uh, structural formulas are still schematics of sorts. Um, but if we look at it from, the, from a more advanced chemistry standpoint, you'll see why we have one side going sort of right side up on this side and the other one being upside down. Okay, so let's jump down to, let's put it in right here. Okay, first things first. You can see here that I'm looking at the sugars. Um, the sugars have a, a pentagon shape in the ring and so that corresponds to these black sugars being pentagons over here. We're going to focus in on deoxyribose for a moment. Um, the same thing applies here as would be to ribose. But if you look at this, you'll see that there's a carbon here, another one here, another one here, here, and here. There are five carbons in deoxyribose sugar. And in fact, we can specifically label these things. Uh, if we start to the, um, the one to the right of the oxygen in the center there, we can always call this one one, call this one two, call this one three prime, four prime, and five prime. What that means is that this side of the molecule where I have the green star, we call that the five prime side of the sugar molecule. And where I have the orange star, we call that three prime because this carbon right here is three prime and this carbon up here is the five prime carbon. That's gonna be a very important thing to sort of register into your brain in just a moment. Okay, so take a look carefully now at what we have here. On, uh, we can see our nucleotide because we have our phosphate here, we have our deoxyribose sugar here, and we have our adenine nitrogen base. So this, what I'm scoping up right now, that is my adenine nucleotide. And you'll also notice that this is the five prime end, or five prime carbon, and this is the three prime carbon, just like what we had moments ago up here, five prime over here, three prime down here. We have the same exact orientation going on right here. Three prime here with the five prime up here. And as a result of that orientation, we are always going to call this side of the DNA molecule and this end of this side, the five prime end. And if we scooch down, we're still staying on this, the left side here, we would call this end the three prime end. Now it's gonna be just the opposite because you can see we've flipped over these pentagons over here on this side. Right? You can see this is upside down, so we have the first, second, third, four prime, five prime here. So that means we have five prime over here on this side because this is our five prime carbon, and we have three prime above it. So five primes down here on the right side of the strand here, we have three prime up here. So that means we run the molecule runs from five prime to three prime on one side downwards and on the other side five prime to three prime upwards on the molecule. So they go in what are called an anti-parallel direction. 
anti-parallel. Okay, they're not exactly parallel. They're parallel in opposite directions. So let me show you one last thing that's important for you to have in your brain. Here we go. This is showing a um, just a set of four nucleotides, but you can easily see what's going on here with this set of four. It's kind of handy to be able to look at this, and I'd hope you'd be able to figure this out too. Um, you can't see it, but right here is going to be the one, two, there's the three prime, four prime, five prime carbon. So that means up here we have the five prime end, down here we have the three prime. I'd expect you to be able to do this, by the way. And then same thing here, we're going to have our one, two, three, four, five. So that means we have five prime down on this side. Whoops, that's not a prime. And that means we have three prime up here. If I were to circle up our nucleotide, we can see here that a nucleotide always needs to consist of a phosphate group, the deoxyribose sugar or ribose sugar, and then its nitrogen base. In this case, the nitrogen base is going to be thymine. And we know that thymine is always going to connect to an adenine with two hydrogen bonds, which I will highlight in yellow. Those are the two hydrogen bonds that exist there. And then you can see here that, once again, I have a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base. In this case, it's adenine. Okay, So you can see we have altogether four nucleotides in the view here. And they are paired up with their complements, thymine with adenine, cytosine with guanine, and they are anti-parallel, where we have the five prime going downwards, five prime to three prime downwards on the left side, five prime to three prime upwards on the right side. Okay? So there you have it. That's your tour around a DNA molecule, and um, this is uh, going to be your friend for the next couple of weeks.